Welcome, welcome along. Uh, Richie here from Heresy Group. So, just going to let a few people join before we get stuck into it. But basically, what this is going to be, guys, is uh, what I'm just trying to get something on the go here. What I'm going to do is make this a, uh, a regular feature. So, perhaps once a month, or once every couple of weeks, or as the kit comes in, uh, what I want to try and do is um, bring you along with me as I dive into uh, you know the unknown, which is obviously cam concealment and uh, ghillie crafting. Obviously, done a little bit of ghillie uh, cam concealment before through my milsim days, but the whole ghillie crafting and uh, you know sort of uh, rifle wraps, ghillie suits is a bit of a new uh, new venture for me. So, like I say, what I want to try and do is make it a bit of a regular feature. So as I do each step of the way, you know, through my loadout, whether it's a rifle wrap, a ghillie, you know, head and shoulders, uh, whatever it is, um, I want to try and kind of include you guys in this live stream. Because uh, so far, the feedback that I've got, um, you know, just asking questions and every time I post a picture, I've had some real good feedback and some really good knowledge. Um, so that... Uh, Further ado, let's get started. Obviously, it's not just going to be about the uh, ghillie crafting and the camera concealment. I will touch on some regular subjects uh, or some topics of the uh, of the hour. So, you know, obviously this month, um, as we're just starting the year, I kind of might want to touch on, you know, some of the events that we're going to be hitting up throughout this year. Um, and obviously, you know, when the next installment of this comes, we'll try and chat a bit about what is a, a topic of the month at that point. So we'll try and keep it a bit, bit vague, but I say would, I would like to make this a regular feature. So, guys, thanks for joining me. Um, Steve, Stephen Payne, just starting the journey myself. Yes, mate, um, it's it's a bit of a, a step into the unknown for me. It really is a uh, step into something that I've not, that's such a, a dark art and a black magic, you know. Um, obviously, you know, some real good people out there, like, you know, all the, all the uh, sniper props lads, you know, Dan from Skirm Shop, obviously, the, the wondrous James Bailey kicking Mustang. Um, these guys do this to another level. So, you know, but that being said, with the crafting of the ghillie suits, etc., same with Airsoft, um, we all come from humble beginnings. So, you know, we all have to start somewhere. Um, obviously, myself being a bit more of a direct action kind of guy, you know, plate carriers and kicking doors, etc. So, um, but looking forward to it, super excited for this. Um, so, yeah, let's get stuck into it. Right, so... Kind of on uh, today's one, I really want to cover um, the rifle wrap, or how I'm going to conceal my rifle. Because um, as we know, the rifles are all sorts of funny shapes, you know, whether you've got a scope, you know, uh, a red dot, a peck, whatever it is, a silencer, um, you know, it's all going to be odd shapes. Some are curved, some are square or box shaped. So it's to me, in my mind, it's a real difficult object to, con uh, you know, to conceal, to make look natural. So um some of you may or may not know that follow the channel um tim has obviously gone down the route of the srs um the bolt action sniper route. obviously that was his that was his roots from back in the day um i've always been a scar heavy fan and i've had I have had this for quite some years so this is obviously my vfc scar heavy um now i know i've cheated a little bit um <laughs> i have made a start on this um obviously i just wanted to sort of tinker with it see how it's going to fit in now this is my vfc scar heavy so this is set up as a dmr a dmr platform so huge huge thank you to uh you know dan um sniper mechanic over at skirm shop uk big thank you to him for sending us the parts for this the uh, tnt barrel tnt nub uh, and hop etc um this thing is absolutely incredible um you know i've had so this runs on 0.4s. This is doing at 380, 380, 389 FPS. And a 0.4, this will throw this out to approximately, well, me and Tim ranged it at about 70 metres. 70 metres. It was still going flat at 70 metres. So I never, ever thought I'd get that sort of performance out of an AG, if I'm honest with you. But I digress. Um, back onto the camp concealment. So, like I say, guys, I've made a bit of a start to this. I will try and reveal this here if I can. Um, let me just take some of this off. So, Tim, uh, we've got to thank him for this. This was his idea um, in the fact that this year, obviously, we are doing, you know, recce. And uh, when I say reconnaissance, I mean reconnaissance and observations um, and intelligence gathering. So, you know, whether 
So really, we're not, we are about, we're not a sniper team. A lot of people get confused with this, but it's not, not a sniper team. We're not a sniper spotter team. We are a reconnaissance and um, intel gathering team. Now, that's, so yes, we will be using cam and concealment, but will we be using it to, you know, necessarily take out targets? Yes, we will, but that's not a primary objective. Our primary objective is to stay hidden, uh, you know, stay covert. So when we say we need to cam conceal, perhaps it's not to the level of, well, for me personally, it's not going to be to the level of kicking Mustang or some of those sniper ops guys and some of the other really good um, snipers you see out there. You know, their level of cam concealment is absolutely insane. You know, they really go to so much effort. Um, for us personally, um, I'm not going to try and aim for that. Um, only because our role will change, and I'll explain a bit, that, bit about that in a second. So, with our role changing, obviously our observations and stuff, it's not always going to be from a rural um, scenario. We're not always going to be in trees, in the woodland, in green. You know, it may be from a building. We may be tucked in a um, in a basement or a loft, you know, or or a roof, etc. So it may well be an urban scenario. In which case, I'm not going to need this covered in leaves, branches, etc. So, thank you to, uh, to Tim for this idea. So obviously we need to keep this rifle pretty much um, accessible. You know, I'm going to need all the features accessible, uh, fire selector switch, um, mags and mag catch will need to be accessible at all times. Um, obviously as well as the optic. Now, Tim had an old, I think this is a Jack Pike um, leaf suit he had kicking about. Basically an old set of bottoms. Now, what he'd done was basically got the, got the trouser legs, two trouser legs, cut them straight out of the middle where the fly would be. So um, we basically had a leg each, much like a Christmas dinner. Now, what we wanted to do was basically get the leg. So this here is the cuff, basically the ankle cuff of, of the leg. This will sit up here and the rest of it comes over. Now, obviously, I've cut holes um, in the places where I need them. Um, Obviously, I've cut a hole just underneath here. So I have access to my bipod should I need it here. Access to the foregrip, because obviously when it comes to um, engagements, you know, if we do get uh, bumped, etc., you know, me being the DMR platform, um, I will be able to take the slightly closer shots than Tim would. I'll still have an engagement distance, but not as much as Tim. Now, again, I've just pulled this back here. I've split this where the magwell goes here. So when time comes, I will actually get this down here. Um, sorry, guys, I'm digressing a bit. I will get to the uh, point of this in a second. So in once this is fully wrapped, once this is finished, basically what I, what I don't want to do, you know, I don't want to make this a permanent feature. I want to be able to remove this. So... Obviously, with all these holes cut, you know, in the right places, exactly where they need to be, I, you know, I want to be able to remove this when I need to. So if I'm going from a rural to an urban scenario, I want to be able to just maybe cut some elastic bands, um, you know, undo a little bit of tape and it can come off. Um, and vice versa, with a couple of elastic bands and a bit of tape, it will go back on. So this was, for, for me, this was an absolute brilliant idea. Um, that Tim came up with. So yeah, I'm really, really pleased with the way this is progressing. So obviously, like I say, guys, that is the cuffed end. That is basically what will be your ankle. Coming back, I've got access to this, access to the magwell, um, but that's as far as I've got so far. I've got to about here. That's where I'm at. Now, obviously, some of you can see, I do have my pet box on the front here. Uh, my This is obviously uh, IR, laser and illuminator. But again, it's still covered here. But I've just exposed, obviously, your um, aiming ports there. I may try and tie some of this back with elastic bands, etc., just to stop the splash coming back off of that. Now, with keeping this secure to the gun, I had a few options, um, and I'm still trying to work them out myself. Um, but what I wanted to do was either use elastic bands, but as you can see, uh, let's just spin this over the elastic bands are quite predominant. So I'm either thinking about perhaps sourcing some 
uh, green elastic bands. Um, if anyone knows where to get green elastic bands from, um, hit us up, send us a, a DM, either here on YouTube or if you on Instagram, uh, send us a DM, that'd be great. Um, alternatively, I'm thinking perhaps getting some, uh, I think they do like garden garden uh, metal ties, you know, sort of the, the, the rubbish bin ties, you know, the ones you twist together. Um, I was thinking of basically putting them on there, just tying them on, that will close that all the way up. And then I can then just, with a twist of that metal, uh, you know, that metal tie, green tie, that will come away. Um, obviously also trying to attach it, I did buy, obviously being the strongest tape in the world, Um, some Gorilla Tape. So this is obviously the uh, real tree or camouflage Gorilla Tape. Now I had some uh, really good feedback when I posted some pictures of this. Uh, some guys DM me um, with some really helpful information. So um, I went for this just because I thought it would be more rugged and, uh, you know, a bit harder wearing. Adhesion would be better. Um, some of the guys kind of showed me that the Jack Pike stuff is not as reflective. This is in which they're absolutely spot on. This is actually a little bit reflective. The Jack Pike is apparently more sort of felt, so therefore hasn't got that light bounce coming off of it. So what I really wanted to do is, and I can say to you, when I want to make this a non-permanent feature, just cut a little section of this off and I'll try and show you guys what I mean. So I need a way of attaching this loose sort of material from what was the ghillie suit um, to, so there's basically two sections um, for me that I need to keep completely clear of any camera concealment, which obviously the, you know, my scope, my rifle scope there, and obviously the barrel. Now, one option I had um, is to put the tape and actually stick this, stick the ghillie to the scope. Um, but I was a bit concerned about rain, etc., getting that and just lifting that off if, you know, if we're in some torrential weather. And obviously with Cine Bridge coming up, I believe that could well be a problem. So what I was thinking of doing was actually putting the tape onto the scope itself like so. Um, now, obviously the tape will come off, shouldn't leave too many marks. But then what this then allows me to do is, and obviously I'm not going to do it here because, uh, you know, it's a little bit not dangerous, but you know, um, with a hot glue gun, um, it actually just use some dots of hot glue around here, press this onto the rifle scope like that. I know uh, Kiki Mustang uses Shugo. Um, I've not tried that myself. I just want to try something a little bit different. Um, you know, obviously Kiki Mustang uses Shugo for a reason. Um, he's obviously got on with it for absolute years, but I just want to kind of do my own thing and then, you know, perhaps try the Shugo. It's always good to compare. So yeah, a bit. I think a bit of hot glue on there, that'll go on. Um, you know, and again, I can always pull this off at a later date, and this will leave no residue or marks on the on the rifle itself. Should I need to strip this and go back to an urban loadout? Now, that's fine, but obviously, as you know, with most things in nature, not a lot in nature is round, and it's you know, if I just leave that quite flat to that, you've got quite a very uh, clear curve on there. Now, what that you know, and that's going to be quite apparent. That's quite a predominant feature. So to try and alleviate some of this, um, I've got some old scrib net kicking about. And obviously, I don't know if you can see, it's absolutely smothered in Krylon because this is what I normally use to Krylon most of my uh, most of my kit, as you can see up here. So a small section of this, again, I will probably wrap around here just to break this up a little bit and 
And again, I'll probably just get this, hold this into place with a small bit of hot glue. So, as you can see, even with just, this is just me throwing it on there, I've not even stuck it down. Um, just with those rough edges, it just breaks that, that curve up a little bit. And obviously I will fold this over. So with this section here, obviously, you know, we can make this better and obviously I will make it better in the fact that I had an old uh, ghillie suit, sort of Hessian style ghillie suit. Now, this came with all sorts of, uh, some of you might be quite familiar with this, this material here. Um, I think it was a Recon Mod 1 ghillie suit. Um, just a head and shoulders, but basically I found it was it was it was nice because it was a head and shoulders, but this stuff, an absolute nightmare. It got caught with all the every single brambles, every single branch, every single bush, and you caused you created more noise getting through the simplest of brush, you know, um, than it you know than it than it was an advantage. So yes, you was you was concealed and you, and you looked sort of part of the bush. But you made so much noise, it was almost pointless having it. So therefore, what I've done is I've basically gone through, cut a load of this off, off of the ghillie suit. Um, so obviously some straw colour, there's some green in there as well. Now what I plan to do is basically get some of this and I will weave it through this scrim net here. So the plan will be to basically push this through. Scott Recon, what's happening? Welcome along. Super Dave, uh, Snipe Pops on Facebook. Yes, mate, I am. Um, I will obviously try and get on some of these pages. Uh, a lot of my research has been done, you know, with the wonderful tool that is YouTube. You know, we, we, you know, we like to help guys on YouTube with our content. And likewise, you know, people like Kicking Mustang and, and there's lots of other guys out there that, um their content is awesome and they've been a, an absolute wonderful library for um for uh, you know inspiration and and help basically where to start because you know for me this is this is a whole other story of you know what you know what i'm getting into so and i'll pretty much just drop that no there we go so yes mate my knitting skills so there we have the scrim net. What I've done is I've just threaded it through once in one side, out the other, maybe one or two squares, nothing too major. Um, then I'll basically feed it back through itself. Just lock that off. And then, I mean, you can rough this up with a pair of scissors to get this looking more, um, uh, what's the word? To have more volume to this, bit of back combing. <laughs> um, but this is already quite worn already, so I don't really feel I need to do that. So that's the scrim net there with it on. And you can see as, as much as I try and lay that out straight, it is kind of sort of doing its own thing, which is great. You know, we want a nice disruptive pattern. So what I'll do is I'll probably do this um, throughout here through a few of these sections um a bit sporadic so that when I, I wrap this over you know the end of the scope or the or as you can see i've done on the barrel that will all just stay remain exposed there i'll just kind of just show you what i mean on the i've done it on the barrel but um i didn't actually thread it through and lock it off i've just threaded it through and left it just it was just to see how it looked because i wasn't sure what method i was going to use at that time so as you can see there rather than being a nice sort of smooth um, round cylindrical object with a bit of roughing there that will come up this has just moved a little bit obviously well I've not glued this I've just put this on and tied it uh, laid it on and tied it rather than hot glue gunned it so yeah 
so it's just breaking that end end up there um i am gonna obviously once this is fully done i am gonna get the uh the crawl on out and just touch up any bits that i think are exposed um but really just trying to break up any sort of sharp lines and you know anything that could possibly stand out um and again like i say guys this is a work in progress um those of you that recently joined um i will leave this up so you can watch it back but basically what i want to do is make this a regular feature of as i go through you know complete each step of this the rifle wrap and then onto the gillies perhaps the head and shoulders um i want to try and do a live stream and keep you guys updated as to what i'm how i'm getting on with the project because like i say this is all this is a new venture for me this is a whole new territory you know those of you that know me uh, know i normally run comms or uh, you know a, a tag launcher or i'm in some sort of command role i'm normally sort of kicking doors rather than sneaky sneaky so this is where we're at so far we're up to here um obviously i'm just gonna i will extend this further back to cover this but realistically this here should be i kind of want it a little bit free because it's going to be tucked into my shoulder and i'll have my full gilly suit on anyway So, uh, I'm trying to think if, if I've got them here. Um, also, Tim was kind enough to give us some sneaky leaves uh, from Skirm Shop UK. Um, just to basically top this off, I may add one or two. I don't know. Um, like I say, what I'll do, guys, I'll get to this sort of point. I will finish this off um, and see how it looks. I made I made some sneaky leaves, sneaky leaves. Um, but as, like I said to you guys, I don't really want to go over the top because if you know if me and Tim are in you know in a rural OP or a hide, um, then obviously we may bounce onto uh, onto a building. We may get asked to push into a building, um, you know, in some sort of observation role there. In which case I need to strip this off, uh, you know, quite quickly. Um, so we're about sort of 20 odd minutes or so. I want to try and keep this short to about half an hour if I can. Every time I do one of these live streams, I don't want to go absolutely crazy and uh, bore you guys because um, it really is just kind of a keeping you guys up to scratch of where I am on this and how I'm getting on, you know, what I find works, what doesn't work. Uh, but overall, I'm super happy with that. Um, like I say, I tried with just the tape, um, you know, taping the ghillie to the gun itself. Um, that 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 I've already changed already. That's um, something that I will try and do. You know, I've, I've already decided that that's not really going to work. I have found a better option, which is hot glue going hot glue going to the tape itself. Um, there's already some changes of you know you find how quickly you can uh, progress. And like I say, with some of the guys that sent us messages regarding the tape, big thank you. I, I can't for life. I can't remember the names because it was on Instagram. But uh, yeah, told us about the Jack Pike stuff and. Seeing the Jack Pike versus this, I think I will. I'll run this out because I've bought it now. I've paid for it, but I probably will uh, go over to the Jack Pike stuff um, or just see what the adhesive properties are like. Um, so, on that, guys, any questions, any comments? Please drop them in now. Yes, yeah, Scout Recon, thanks for joining, mate. It was a pleasure. Uh, hands, can't wait to see it in progress. Love it, looks great. Keep up the great work. Hans, thank you, mate. Really appreciate the support. Um, like I say, this is a new venture for me, so it's always interesting to hear people's feedback. So um, if you're into this kind of stuff, um, you know, feel free to send me a message or drop a comment. You know, if there's something I'm doing right, something I'm doing wrong. Um, it's always good to hear people's input on this. So I will try and at some point, obviously, also get Tim's Tim's SRS uh, side by side next to this, and we can give you guys a bit of a, you know, progress uh, up up on that. Um, whilst we're here, I will just show you, obviously, because uh, I do feel like a, a, a bit like a kid at Christmas for this. Um, my first my first ever ghillie suit, really. Uh, that's the bottoms.
Right, there we go. So this is the North Mountain Gear 3D Premium Suit. Um, I literally cannot wait to start tinkering with this. I mean, I kind of almost want to go to a, go to an event with, with it just like this, just to see how it performs bog standard without doing anything to it. Um, I was surprised just at uh, how heavy these are, you know. The quality of this is, I expect it to be really light and flimsy, really light. Um, it's not heavy to the point where it's encumbering, but uh, it's just, uh, yeah. Tim, how's it going, mate? Um, yep, yeah, obviously just thought, uh, I, <laughs> I feel your pain, brother, that you're still working, but uh, yeah, I've got to behave myself now when I know the boss is here. Um, yeah, so... Obviously, with ghillie suits, um, I've never owned one, so I expect it to be, I don't know, in my head, I thought they are going to be lightweight, flimsy, you know, very thin material. But this is almost like, um, I can describe it, like a, like, a, like a running jacket. You know, if you, if you decide to go jogging, I believe it's with a silent J. Um, yeah, but it's got a tight, it's very breathable, so it's got lots of little holes in it. So I can't see you getting very, I don't know if you can see that. Oh, yeah, look, perfect. So you can see just how see-through that is. So I don't think in the come even come the summer, I don't think this will be too hot or too warm. Um, another really good point about this that stuck out for me uh, was I expected to have buttons on the front. And when I saw it had a zip, I was like, ah, oh, that's a shame. I thought they were so close. And no matter what's happening, mate, how are you? Um, yeah, when I saw they, they had a zip on the front, I was like, ah. Oh, such a shame such a shame i thought that's going to cause no end of no end of bother with the leaves getting caught in it um i've sat there and literally just did this thing up and down up and down up and down and the leaves didn't get caught in it once so i take that all back yeah really really good um pockets on the side as well zipper pockets um they're quite deep as well yeah they're, they're, they're the full full length of that but yeah like i say guys um Again, big thank you to uh, Dan over at Scone Shop UK for these. Um, these were about, let me just check. Uh, I did get it up. I think these were about 80, 84, 85 pounds, um, I think. So they are, I I say they're expensive. I've never had a leaf, I've never bought a leaf suit. But, you know, I always thought it was leaf suits and uh, ghillies being around about sort of the 30 pound, 40 pound mark. Um, so for me, this was quite, a big spend but that being said um i'm very happy with it you know i don't feel i've spent the money and i feel like i've been cheated uh yeah very very good quality so again guys really looking forward to tricking this out yeah so guys what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna wrap this here because we just came up to the 30 minute mark um i kind of want to keep these little segments down to 30 minutes so obviously this is part one um of the progress of the you know the sort of the whole cam concealment ghillie rifle etc um what i'll try and do is i'll try and do another section soon once i've got on with the rifle and done a bit more to that um and we'll give, keep you updated so uh yeah thanks for joining guys um any questions any comments please inbox the channel or myself uh richie underscore the heritage group or tim underscore the heritage group um, always happy to hear your questions, comments. Um, like I say, hit us up. If I'm doing something right or doing something wrong with this whole sort of rifle wrap, etc., um, you guys have been a great help so far. So other than that, uh, thanks for joining. Have a great evening.